first let's talk about soft lenses. Early keratoconus patients are actually able to wear standard soft lenses if you catch them early enough. It's really important to let the patient know that it is a progressive disease and the prescription will change, especially if they don't end up getting cross -linked. So while they will be able to wear these early on, it usually will not be a viable option long-term, especially if their condition keeps progressing. A lot of keratoconus patients are able to be fit into more custom soft lenses and there's a lot of different options on the market. Again, if you kind of talk to your laboratory or look up soft keratoconus contact lenses, there's a lot of great options out there. I definitely use them for patients that maybe don't tolerate some of these other lenses well, or maybe they're not as advanced. They so don't have to go to a scleral lens necessarily. A lot of these custom lenses have good return policies, which is something that is important. So a lot of patients are worried that if they go and they pick the wrong wrong design or they can't see well that they're not going to get any of their money back or they're not going to be able to try anything else. So that's something that I always like to go through with patients is what's the return policy and kind of can we go to a different lens design if this doesn't end up working. So just have a case report from a patient that we saw, 33-year-old white female. She was diagnosed with keratoconus in 2019. She had corneal crosslinking in her left eye in 2020. She did not have any plans for the right eye as far as she was concerned as of this moment. She did complain that she had strained vision, she had double vision, and she had headaches. With her spectacles, she could see 2040, but she said it was very doubly and very shadowy in the right eye and the left eye. So here's a picture of her topography of her right and left eye. This is more of a mild case, but she had done a lot of her own research. She was actually a physician's assistant, so she's in the medical community, so she had done a lot of research and talked to a lot of other doctors, and she wanted to be fit into scleral lenses. So that's what we did at first. We fit her into scleral lenses, but every time she came in, she told me, these are so dry. I just want to rip these out of my eye. And I, I don't know what the problem is. We looked at the fit. It was perfect. The fluid layer was perfect. We tried changing the material of the scleral lens. We added hydropeg coating. We changed the filling solution. So we did basically everything that we could as far as a contact lens component, still no effect. We also added in uh, restasis and some other lubricant drops, checked her in a month, really no, no change. We refit her into a hybrid lens and then ultimately a soft lens. So here's the hybrid lens. So you can see hybrid lens, it's a gas permeable lens in the middle with the soft contact lens skirt. This actually fits her eye very well, but within five minutes in the office, she said, I'm having that same feeling. I have to rip this thing out of my eye. It's so uncomfortable. So then we said, okay, we're going to try something else then. So then I reached for something called the Kerasoft Thin, which is is a soft custom lens for keratoconus. And first I fit her into the 8.6 base curve. And you can see kind of when she's looking around, the contact lens is sliding a lot. So not like a typical contact lens fit that I would prefer to see for a patient like this. With this type of lens, you don't want it to slide around a ton. That means that the lens is a bit too flat. So now we fit her into an 8.4 base curve, something a little bit steeper. And you can see it's moving a lot lot less. It's pretty well centered. It's not moving nearly as much as the other lens. Just for fun, I fit her into the 8.2 base curve, but you can see there's a very large bubble there. So now I know I've gone too steep. So it's kind of a good way, you know, they've got a lot of different options in the fitting set. For this patient, it was easy to figure out that she ended up needing the 8.4. We ended up fitting her into that lens and we just did an over refraction and she was able to get to 2020 by adding in a little bit of cylinder. And so we just added in that exact prescription and got her to where she needed to be. So here's a patient where they've got keratoconus. We tried a scleral lens and it just did not work out. If you fit these types of lenses to any capacity, you will find that there are patients that they just don't do well with scleral lenses. So you have to have another option. Gas permeable lens options offer very good vision for early to very advanced cases of keratoconus. Something that we need to know is that the lens bears entirely on the cornea. So some of the good and best candidates are nipple or oval cones, patients that are wanting a lower cost option. Gas permeable lenses, corneal GPs in particular, cost less than hybrid and scleral lenses. So they are a lower cost option for patients. So sometimes that's really important. So we've got to 
to consider that. And other patients that maybe they've tried and failed in other modalities. Some of the risks that we have to be all aware of with corneal GPs is that apical touch, especially significant amount of apical touch, can lead to scar tissue. And what happens if they're lost to follow-up care? This is something that's happened to some of my patients where I have fit them and I am positive they've got a beautiful three-point touch with the lens that I have fit, and then I don't see them for three years. And then they come back and they're like, oh, I got busy, I forgot, this and that. And now their keratoconus has progressed, and now the lens is fitting super flat. So now they're at risk for scar tissue and all sorts of other issues. So you have to realize that that could also be an issue that comes up. In the CLEC study, there's so much amazing information that came out of this. But if if you remember from the CLEC study, we found out that keratoconus patients that were fit in lenses that were very, very flat had more scar tissue on the cornea compared to the patients that were fit in steep designs. So that's always something in the back of my mind as well. You know, am I, am I sure that this patient's going to follow up? Are they going to come back every year for me to adjust the design? What if I lose them to follow up care? What's going to happen to their cornea? We had a 34 year old black female that has keratoconus. She had corneal cross-linking epi off in May, 2020, and then in the right eye, and then August 2020 in the left eye. She uses sustained tears and oasis tears as needed, and she complains that her eyes are really blurry. She's got double vision, and uh, she's got very sensitive eyes to light. She hasn't used any glasses or contacts at all. Her uncorrected vision is 2050 in the right eye and 2100 in the left eye. Here's her topography on the right eye, so you can see her K max is about 60 diopters. So I would say you know moderate case here. So here's the first lens we tried on. It's a rose. K, a very uh, classic GP lens for keratoconus patients. 6.2 base curve, 8.7 diameter. And when I look at that, I think, hmm, that's a little bit too tight for me as far as uh, it's touching a little bit too much on the cone. So I wanted to see what happened if I steepened up the the base curve. The second lens, we did a, a 6.0 base curve, and this one looks better, but it looked a little bit too steep. So then I ended up going with the 6.1 base curve, which looked a lot better to me compared to the other two. So again, just kind of bracketing the different lens options and getting something that fits on the eye fairly well. And at least you have a starting. That way you can kind of see, is it touching too much? Okay, let's go steeper. Okay, is it uh, is there a bubble? Am I getting way too much pooling? Okay, let's go flatter. So with this patient, we ended up ordering the Rose K2. Based off the video, the consultant said, yeah, the 6.1 looked good, but let's just go a hair steeper. With the over-refraction, she, she ended up seeing really well. Scleral lens patients, the reason why a lot of practitioners and patients go into them is because the comfort is really good compared to some of the other modalities. Are they easier to fit than corneal gas permeable lenses? Depends on who you ask. If uh, you did a lot of corneal GPs in school, then you're a lot more comfortable fitting corneal gas permeable lenses. If you didn't do a lot of corneal GP lenses and you did a lot more scleral lenses, you feel more comfortable with scleral lenses. So I don't think one is easier to fit than the other. I think what ends up happening is you really have to understand the disease of care Keratoconus, because that's what the difficult part is. Seeing these patients for their follow-ups, troubleshooting the lens designs, that's where all the, the issues could come up. So I'm not sure if one is technically easier than, than the other, just depends on your comfort level as a practitioner. One of the benefits is that you don't get lens dislodgement, you don't get foreign body entrapment. Fluid reservoir from the scleral lens holds that liquid to the eye all day. So really, really good for dry eye patients. In fact, it ends up being a really good treatment option just for dry eye patients in general. And it's really given us the ability to fit these very, very highly irregular corneas. Some of the keratoconus patients that have very advanced cases, they're very, very hard to fit with corneal GP lenses. They're constantly popping out. They're constantly having edge lift. The patient's complaining all the time. In that case, scleral lens could be a really good option. This is a great study that was done. I always refer to this. It's such a great study that I like to share with a lot of my ophthalmology colleagues. Scleral lenses reduce the need for corneal transplants and severe keratoconus. This is great because it kind of shows that with severe keratoconus patients, instead of going down the route of corneal transplant, try them in a scleral lens first and kind of see where that takes them and see if they get acceptable vision. So let's go through our scleral lens case report. 
we had a 38 year old Hispanic male referred by his ophthalmologist for a contact lens consult in his left eye only. He does have a history of keratoconus. He wore gas permeable lenses for 10 years, but he complained that they were always popping out, that they were always uncomfortable. So he wanted to see if there were any other options. Best vision is 2080, and you can see here in the picture, he does have a corneal scar. We discussed different options with him. He decided he wanted to go for the scleral lens option. We ended up doing a, a corneal scleral topography on him. Basically, we're capturing the scleral shape, so where he's looking up, down, and straight ahead, and we're taking all of these measurements and using that to stitch an image so we can see where the elevation is on his eyeball. So this is the elevation map. You know, similar to us as eye doctors, we're used to seeing corneal topography, but this is something kind of newer. It's scleral topography. This shows us areas that are more or less elevated. So you can see kind of in the nasal and temporal side, you know, that three and nine area, you can see that those areas are more elevated, especially that nasal area where there's a, there's a small pinguecula. So it's really cool with some of this technology when you're designing these custom scleral lenses, you're able to kind of vault over those areas and get them into something that's, that's very comfortable. Fit him into a diagnostic lens and with an over refraction, he was able to see 2030. Here's just a picture. You can see kind of the 3D mapping of kind of what the lens looks like on the eye. On that nasal aspect, you can see there's that small pinguecula. The lab is taking into consideration that area and making sure that that area is more elevated. Lens dispense here, he's seen 2030. The alignment and the centration look really good. He said the comfort was excellent. No significant over refraction. We then again saw him in two weeks, one month, and three months later with really no change. So scleral lenses, amazing option for keratoconus patients. Lastly, glasses. Do they even need glasses? Is it even worth it? I tell patients, this is something for if your house catches on fire, you reach for your glasses and you get out. It might provide some functional vision. Most keratoconus patients will never wear their glasses unless it's an emergency or they have some sort of eye infection or they lost their contact lens. But I always encourage them to have a backup pair just in case. Thank you.